Okay, our next presenter is Wynne McLaughlin from the University of Oregon from the Geological Sciences Program, and her presentation is Earthquakes, Climate Change, and Fossils. Oh my. Thank you. So despite appearances today, India is actually a separate continent from Asia, and it's slamming into the rest of Asia. So think of a dog hitting a rug in a hallway. That rug gets totally crumpled up. That's exactly what's happening to Asia as India runs into it. And that crumple zone is the Himalayan mountains. So about 10 to 12 million years ago, the Himalayas were so squished that they have been uplifted so far, they are now eroding at the same rate that they're being uplifted. And it's no longer enough to accommodate all of that deformation from India's collision. So again, 10 to, 10 to 12 million years ago, some of that deformation propagated north into the Tian Shan Mountains of Kyrgyzstan and China. So why should we care about this? Well, as a result of how much squishing is going on, you're creating all of these earthquake faults to the extent that Kyrgyzstan is now the single most earthquake prone country in the world. This is really problematic for a country that is rapidly industrializing, has a growing population, and is changing from a much more nomadic lifestyle to buildings with you know, a huge amount of infrastructure. Now, the first thing that really needs to be done to assess the risk posed by all of these earthquake faults is how old are the faults? When did they form? And how active have they been? This is a really big deal for are you going to expect a 5.0 earthquake or a 9.0 earthquake? Now in Oregon, we have it really easy. If you need to figure out how old a fault is, there's radi there's, you can do radiometric dating because there's ash all over the place. We have volcanoes. We have some more volcanoes. It's just really easy. But Central Asia doesn't have volcanoes. The closest volcanoes are Italy. It's kind of too far. We can't do radiometric dating. So in a really roundabout way, that's where I, the paleontologist, come in. So I'm collecting fossils in the Kachkor Basin in Kyrgyzstan and doing what's called biostratigraphy. So I take fossils, identify what species it is, and compare them to places like the Suwalks in Pakistan, Mongolia, and some Chinese fossil deposits, where we have a much better idea of how old each of those fossils are. Now, this can only get you so far. If I just take something like this really cute rhinoceros called Chylotherium, it shows up about 12 million years ago and goes extinct about 7 million years. That's not a great resolution. But if I take something like Chylotherium, the rhino, a type of horse called Hyperion, and this cool little mongoose tooth we found in Kyrgyzstan, you can take different ranges and come up with a very narrow age estimate for how old the rocks those fossils came from, and therefore how old the faults cross-cutting them are. So this is how I use paleontology to get at ages of rocks and the earthquake risk posed for an entire country. And that data goes into constructing hazard maps. Now, as if that wasn't cool enough, the other thing I do is I look at how climate has changed in Central Asia and how that's contributed to the modern fauna we see there today. So things show up in Asia that are very different than a lot of the rest of Eurasia and you know, Southeast Asia. And some of those faunas started in Kyrgyzstan. So I'm looking at how old it is and how it's changed from this forested area to this much more open grassland, similar to the climate change we expect to see in the future. Thank you.